came to the village where Gifford in 1984 and as a local community worker for Devon County Council I had an interest in community groups and village and developing facilities and things like that. Um, so down through the years we've created lots of things in the village but one of those is the Weird Gifford Recreation Ground in which you are at the moment. Um, it's three and a half acres and the reason why I tell you that is that um, to find a site for a community orchard is not easy and by coincidence the uh, park or recreation ground uh, have a little, um, it's just about half an acre actually of land that they never knew what to do with in 1988 when the uh, ground was set up. So it was really waiting for someone like me and others to come along with the idea of a community orchard to fill that site. I came up with the idea having seen uh, an orchard in Bradford-on-Avon actually, um, a small orchard and I thought that's a rather nice idea and uh, then a few years later somebody in the village asked me to look something up on the 1839 tithe map which every parish has and I noticed on the tithe map that almost every cottage, every house had some form of uh, orchard probably only six, eight, ten trees or something um, but uh, looking around the village now I could only find one of such uh, orchard so I suddenly put the two ideas together that we'd lost the orchards and yet uh, people like Bradford or Avon were actually promoting new orchards. So I put a little advert in the local um, parish magazine and uh, saying that I'd like to try this idea, would anybody like to buy their own tree? Uh, we've caught, we've, we sold, sold it to, the, to those people by saying that they were memory trees. You buy a tree in memory of somebody or in memory of the current family that they have and within five weeks I had I was oversubscribed and I had to redesign the orchard slightly and hence we were sold out I think in six or seven weeks something like that so each member has contributed and bought their own tree and planted their own tree and um, that's how the orchard has grown it would be in the sort of summer type of time of 2015 because we're five years old now um, half the site was covered in 60 foot high willows uh, which um, soon went because people wanted the wood. Uh, the rest of the site took a little bit longer. Uh, that was covered in brambles and nettles, uh, general matted grass which is the bugbear even today. Um, everything grows well on the, on the floodplain here so it's, um, it's okay for growth but uh, you've got to look at the maintenance issue as well. So yes, um, we had a big working party, well several weekends actually, and the trees came down and the brambles and everything else were cut down, a little bit of spraying I'm afraid, and um, then we had to rake everything reasonably flat uh, for mowing. Um, and uh, we had some good working parties, they were, they were very keen, and some still are. <laughs> and. Um, in the November of 2015 they then came along on a very windy, very cold, very wet day to plant their individual trees. And what varieties have you got here? We have 35 trees and, uh, and they're all apple and uh, the orchard is split into two halves. Um, one half is uh, the old standards M25s and we have 18 of those and we have another 17 or so of M106s or MM106s, I can never quite remember. Um, and they're half standards, so uh, we have altogether something like 32 members owning 35 trees. They're all apple, as I said. Uh, nice 74% are Devon apples, uh, Devon varieties, and I asked all the members if they could. Um, choose from Devon first of all and then if they couldn't find a variety they wanted then they would go to Cornwall or Somerset. So about 96-97% are southwest varieties in all with three vogue, rogue trees. <laughs> um, well we were very lucky because uh, I say lucky I mean maybe research would be one answer 
Um, I wouldn't have known that this was uh, an ancient orchard if I, or an old orchard if I hadn't looked at the tithe map. Every parish has got a tithe map, so it might be an interesting um, angle to uh, find your tithe map from the village or wherever you are. And um, you'll see the orchards down there uh, against almost every house, as I said earlier. Uh, and it could just be that um, there's a piece of land just as we found here in your village where, um, or your area, where you could perhaps persuade the landowner that he would like to replace an existing orchard that was on the site with your orchard, your new community orchard. So that's a possibility. Um, research always pays off sooner or later. Um, parish councils are another angle, of course. Um, if you've got the parish council on board, then uh, there's another six, eight, ten, however many parish, parish councillors you've got, uh, looking for a site for you as well. So the more people involved the better, and I think sooner or later someone will come out of the woodwork. Um, it is a case of trying to get, uh, obviously, um, as long a lease on the land as possible and tie it up legally at the end of the day. Um, well, the layout was pretty obvious because M25s have got to be X number of feet apart, as, as have the 106s. So layout was fairly obvious. Um, we've got certain issues here with regards to the tall existing trees that are on the side of the orchard. Uh, we've just got to live with those because we weren't allowed to take them down. Um, for the first four years we decided we would mow the whole site. It's about The grass itself is about a third of an acre. Um, and that's fine, we had a rotor and the rotors worked reasonably well. Um, it always needs uh, someone to chase everybody to do it, but um, they all get a fair amount of notice, but <laughs> they need reminders. Um, the, mowing, the mowing itself has worked well, the mower's fine and everything else like that. Um, we tried to develop the site in other ways. We have a couple of bee hotels. Uh, we haven't seen any bees, they only went up this spring. Uh, the masonry bee hives or hotels. Um, so we're hoping that that will help with pollination. Uh, we designed and created an, an interpretation board two years ago, which uh, people find very useful, they tell me. They've got, it's got the history of the site that I've outlined earlier, and who did it, and why and when. Various people have donated seats. I'm leaning against one, and someone else has donated a rather nice bench seat in memory of uh, their husband. Um, Maintenance and management is done via, largely via email with me communica uh, communicating with all the members. Yes, we, we've had, we have two working parties a year, roughly. Uh, one uh, in the February time when we prune and then we do a bit of cleaning up after the winter. And uh, one in the September time when we cut the longer grass that we have now decided to leave. Basically the pattern of the ground is that we uh, We've now cut access paths, as we call them, so that people can uh, meander between trees and um, get a little bit more out of the site than just a lawn, basically, with a few trees on it. One of the selling points that we don't have to sell, really, is that once people find the site, uh, they find it very tranquil and um, relaxing and recreative, if you like. And, um, Lots of people have come to me and said that they come and sit here and just uh, meditate and sit and stare. And in today's society it's good to have places where you can um, sit and stare and not rush around all the time. So management is reasonable. Uh, members pay £5 a year subs um, if you can chase them for it. Uh, uh, We've reached a phase now where we've got everything we want, we think. We don't think we're going to build or construct anything else. We've got seats and trees and um, interpretation board and so on. And it's really now a phase of pruning and formative, really, get, getting the trees in the right form and shape for many years to come. And we're just about to enter a phase of um, quite significant forming or formative pruning. This is the interpretation board. We get a lot of visitors to the park 
they enjoy the swings, the children and the uh, this cricket and football and I wanted people to understand why and what we did and when we did it and how we did it. So the board generally runs through uh, why is there an orchard here and I talk about the heritage factor with regards to the 1839 um, orchard and I'd like to digress for a second to say that we did find two trees from the original orchard it was in the next section of ground um, and we were able to take uh, five grafts from those trees one of which is now gone so that's very fortunate that we've got the offspring as it were one is probably a Newton Wonder and the other one is probably uh, a Bramley um, so they're now replanted in the orchard as part of the general plantation when the orchard was established 2015 as I've said earlier a terribly wet windy day which if you have a close-up of that you can see we were all freezing and wet and cold I took um, I got a friend to take a drone picture of the orchard onto which we superimposed all the trees so that these are the tree names or variety and whether they are cider or dessert or cooking. Photograph of tree stump removing when we had to clear the site in summer of 2015 and generally speaking who was involved i.e. all the donors that I've spoken about earlier. We haven't yet got round to enough fruit to think about pressing although one or two people in the village do have their own little presses so that might well happen. About 10 out of the 35 trees with uh, no fruit on so <clears throat> we were wondering whether it's a, a pollination issue it could equally be a pruning issue or just the general environment of the larger trees on the banks I mentioned earlier so one of the members is experimenting with um, different flowers not necessarily wild flowers which I think would probably have trouble growing in this rich soil but um, certainly flowering plants uh, and shrubs and things. We've got um, a honeysuckle or two growing up the uh, silver birch tree over there alongside the interpretation board and here Sarah has planted several, uh, well more than several different varieties of flowers which are difficult to see at the moment. <laughs> it's, uh, this only went in in the spring so we're just trying it all out this year. And panning around I thought I'd just point out to you the uh, header stones uh, there are five rows here of trees and they were A, B, C and D and E and F or something and we decided that we would like to uh, have them a bit more personal to the village so each of the header stones on each of the rows represents something pertinent to the village of Weir Gifford we have um, strawberries there it used to be a big strawberry village um, with the hill behind the strawberries were marvellous, even sent to London at one time. Uh, Badger Row, Kingfisher and so on and on one again very wet Saturday morning we had as many children as we could find, members, children, families belonging with, with trees and we came down and in two tents, one of which blew away, we managed to create the mosaic headstones for each of the rows. So community involvement is essential for ownership um, and generally works well, generally works well.